Hey guys, it is Monday, May 29th. It is Memorial Day in the States. And um, I just wanted to show you what I worked on last night. So this is um, Mermaid Treasure Box, Chatelaine Designs. Um, this is the top of the box that has a big mermaid um, in the center. So this is another one of my Year of Whips pieces. It is the last Year of Whips piece that I'm going to work on during um, Stitch Mania. So uh, I worked on this last night. I will work on it again tonight. And then the last two days of the month, um, I'm working on something else. So uh, progress. I am over in this area and I am doing all of this um, dark green fill-in um, and that kind of comes up here so I will continue to work on that tonight and see if I can get all that fill-in done um, and then of course this side needs all of that done as well um, but it also needs all of the little seaweed um, stitched first so um, but I thought it was a good opportunity to show you uh, a good close-up of this piece. Um, I love, love, love the road stitches in the border. Love the eyelet stitches in pink there and even that little rice stitch um, that's right there. So pretty. And this of course has some metallics in it. You can see that petite treasure braid And down here, some more Petite Treasure Braid. I love this piece. I love the colors in it. So, um, and since all of my pieces of fabric are cut to size, um, I did want to make sure, since I was starting with the outer frame, that I knew exactly where my center was. So I just made a little X for my center so I could count and make sure I was in the right spot. Um, I have not done any beading yet, as you can probably tell. Um, so there will be beads in between all of these little pieces right here, etc. So beads and crystals, that's what we like. So more on this tonight. Hey guys, it is Tuesday, May 30th, and I wanted to show you how far I got on Mermaid Treasure Box last night. So you can see I finished the green fill-in up here. And then I actually was able to carry it over all the way to the other side. Um, and then I started in with this um, glacier color that's going to come down and kind of go along this um, this outline here. So I feel really good about how much I got done over the past two nights. I'm really pleased with that. So this will go back in the box and uh, then I will work on, this is the last of my Year of Whips pieces. So I have worked on every one of them um, throughout Stitch Mania. So I'm really happy about that. I'm really glad that I touched each one of them, got some progress in on them. Um, some of them made great progress on. Um, so for the last two days of Stitch Mania, I'm actually going to move on to my Coffee Quaker. So let me show you where that one is at. Here's where I left off, and um, you can see I've just got a little bit more to do down here, um, and then I think I've got a couple more motifs up here on this side. So this one is relatively close to being done as well. So I'm going to work on this for the next couple of nights, tonight and tomorrow night. And then that will round out Stitch Mania for me. And um, 
I will come back and show you how far I got on this and then let you know what my post stitch mania plans are. Have a great day. Hey guys, it is Thursday, June 1st. So mania is officially over. Um, I am planning to do kind of a, a big sort of wrap up video um, to just talk about my thoughts on Stitch Mania and what my plans are going forward, all of that good stuff. But for today, I just wanted to show you my progress that I made on Coffee Quaker. So I worked on this the last two nights. Um, I did not get a ton accomplished. I was just sort of scattered. So um, I managed to get this motif finished and then I stitched all of this one. Um, I'm still loving this piece. I'm still loving my color changes and how that's all coming out. Um, and like I said, I've got a couple motifs right here. Um, I think I've got a big one right here and then kind of all the way up the side, I've got, you know, motifs there that I need to get stitched. So um, this is moving along, uh, but um, it's going to be a little while before I finish it, but love this piece. So that's the progress that I made. Um, Ramses has come to investigate. <laughs> so um, tonight I am actually going to start the patriotic ornament that I need to get done for the exchange that we're going to do at Guild next week. So. I'm going to get a start on that. So I pulled some fabric. Um, I had, you know, a few little scraps of fabric in my stash. I think these are both 40 count. One is flax. Um, I'm not sure what this is. Maybe exemplar. Um, so I'll probably use one of those too. And I am going to stitch this um, shepherd's bush piece. Um, but obviously it'll be much smaller on 40 count. So that's my plan and I think it'll turn out cute. So, um, and then the other thing that I did yesterday was I went stash diving for, uh, fabric, not only for my patriotic piece, but also for my, um, Salem remembered piece. And I found this fabric. Um, that color is a little closer. Um, this is mystery fabric that I had in my stash. It is clearly lakeside linens. It is clearly, um, uh, vintage because it does have some modeling to it, as you can see. Um, but I'm assuming I bought this for something. And I have no idea what that something is. So it's now going to be for Salem Remembered. <laughs> and um, you will see here my very scientific method of figuring out what count this fabric was because I didn't know if it was 36 or 40 or what. Um, and so I, you know, stitched 20 stitches and then measured it. And lo and behold, it is 40 count. So um, good to know. So that will be um, my fabric that I use for Salem Remembered. I just need to figure out my threads. And again, that um, stitch along is starting on June 10th. And I'm really looking forward to it. Um, and later on, I may have a sudden revelation and remember what this fabric was for, but whatever. I'm going to use it on something I want to stitch now. So um, anyway, so that's the plan and it's really overcast today. It is supposed to rain, which I hope it does. Um, but uh, that's it for me. Hey guys, it is Wednesday, June 7th. And um, this is my first, 
I guess, kind of post Stitch Mania video. So I had intended to record this sort of wrap up video um, like a week ago, but things happened to me. So um, anyway, so I'm recording now and I wanted to kind of, you know, tell you sort of my thoughts about Stitch Mania, you know, now that it's over, um, as well as kind of what I've been working on since then. So let me just kind of dive in with my Stitch Mania thoughts. So um, obviously at the beginning of this video, I put in kind of my last few um, vlog, you know, recordings so that you could see kind of those last few days of Stitch Mania. Um, when I worked on like my mermaid treasure box and coffee Quaker, etc. So that's obviously on the front end of this. Um, so I had a lot of different thoughts about Stitch Mania. Um, and I just kind of felt like I wanted to do a face to face video <laughs> rather than a um, you know, me showing you my work, um, or my large cat. Okay, I think he settled. We'll see. Um, so I wanted to do this sort of face to face, uh, because in, whatever. That's what I wanted to do. So here I am. And this is the first opportunity that I've had to do that. Um, so thoughts. Um, I think this is the first time I've participated in Stitch Mania. I think I mentioned before that I had done the crazy January 15, whatever that was, like years ago. And it was the same kind of thing, you know, like 15 new starts, first 15 days of January, whatever. And I think, you know, at the time I was going to work on whips and not new starts. So it was kind of same sort of deal as this time uh, for Stitch Mania. But after about three or four days, I was like, I'm done with this. <laughs> this is crazy. All of this swapping of, uh, you know, projects and having to take things on and off my Q-snap and you know whatever that was making me nuts so I threw in the towel rather quickly and have since not had any interest in participating in you know stitch mania or anything kind of along those same lines um but the more that I thought about it the more I thought you know I think it would be kind of a fun thing to do and just work through all of my year of whips pieces so you know that was my plan obviously and doing it every other day I thought that was going to be kind of doable because it was it would give me enough time to work on something that I wasn't kind of frantically you know every day having to swap things out and so this time what I did too is I had in my spreadsheet just like Emily, I had planned out, you know, what I was going to work on every day during the month of May. And so what I would do is I would pull everything for that week and gather all of my stuff and make sure that I had all of my pieces and parts and threads and what have you. And for the most part, all of those things were already gathered. Um, I had a couple of instances like with Mermaids of the Deep Blue where um, because I'm stitching that with DMC and it's a large amount of DMC, um, I had pulled all of that out of there a while back because it seemed like every time I needed a thread it was in Mermaids of the Deep Blue. So I just pulled all that DMC. So I did have to go out. Um, go through and you know pull all of that um but i think that was one of the few pieces that i really had to pull threads for everything else was pretty much all ready together and ready to go it was just a matter of kind of getting it to the top of the pile 
So, um, but doing the every other day thing really worked out because it did allow me, uh, you know, a little bit of prep time. It so it wasn't like, you know, eight o'clock at night, I'm walking into my stitching room and I say that like I have a stitching room, walking into the map room uh, that has my craft closet in it and pulling my stitching um, and I could just pick it up and go. I wasn't having to like rifle through things. So that was helpful. It was helpful to have out, you know, all of my plan. Here's what I'm going to do on which day kind of thing so that I could pull them a week at a time. Um, so that I think is what really saved me and made this work really well. Um, and, you know, as you saw, I threw some things in there too. So, and made some adjustments as I was going, which, you know, is the fun about having a plan, but then also having the flexibility to throw the plan out the window if you feel like it. So I had only planned one new, one new start, which was, you know, on May 1st, that was that horn book. Um, and I'm stitching with the elephant and castle. Um, and that was the only one that I had planned. Um, obviously when I got to Colonial Garden, that really only got one day of stitching because after one day I had had enough. Um, I did actually stitch on it the morning of the second day, but that was really just a, I'm going to give it one more shot <laughs> kind of thing. And then I was like, yeah, no. Um, and so then obviously um, that left me with uh, you know, being, having really only worked on that one day, um, then I was able to just slot um, Moulin Rouge in, and that was a new start that I had had, you know, sitting ready to be started for years and years and literally years, um, because I think I bought that in like 2006, 2007. So anyway, so I got, uh, you know, I was, I sort of then shifted because the way I had planned it was two days and then I'd have one day at the end that was just going to be, you know, a project that I worked on one day. But since Colonial Garden was that one day, I just shifted everything by a day. Um, so started Moulin Rouge, obviously, and then um, I had planned to work on Williamsburg Remembered, which is that Catherine Theron project that I'm working on with a couple friends of mine. Um, I had scheduled that to be my project for that weekend that we were getting together, um, but I really didn't want to work on it. I really wanted to start Francis Eden. So, um, you know, I took both pieces over um, to uh, my friend's house and you know, she kind of said, I have it out, but I don't really want to work on it. But we can work on it if you want to. And I said, I brought it, but I don't really want to work on it, but we can. And then um, our other friend said, yeah, I forgot to bring mine. <laughs> so we were like, okay, we're done with this. I'm just going to do Francis Eden. You're going to do what you want to do and you're going to do what you want to do. So, um, that all worked out. And, um, you know, I talked a little bit about Francis Eden and, um, making some changes on that and my sort of false start and then my actual start in the center. Um, and I'm anxious to get back to that one. I'm really, that's another one that I'm so, so glad it has been sitting here for so long. Um, and I'm so glad that I finally started it. And um, uh, Nicole from Nicole's Needlework restarted hers, which I'm thrilled about. Um, so that was fun to see as well. And um, and because I think I mentioned this, so a friend of mine had gifted me with um, the fabric and the um, Vicki Clayton hand-dyed silks, uh, hand-dyed fibers for Francis Eden. 
so that we could both do it just like Siobhan. <laughs> and um, so I, I, you know, I remembered that and how sweet she was to gift me with that. And so I reached out to her to, you know, say hi and try to catch up and see how she's doing. So um, there was a nice little, you know, thing that came out of that. And um, instead of working on my Halloween neighborhood, which I had planned to for Dark 13 Stitcher, Dark 13 Stitching, um, I started that Blackbird Designs um, Casting a Spell uh, piece. So, yeah, so I had some new starts. Um, and they were each, uh, except for the Hornbook, which is kind of a new happening. Um, you know, they were each things that I have had sitting here that I've been wanting to stitch and have held off on because my um, number of whips was overwhelming. But you know what? Why not start them? And why not put a few stitches in them? And, you know, who knows? I may just decide that um, I love them and I don't want to put them down and then I will just stitch my guts out and um, finish them and then it will be finished and I will have something to love and appreciate on my wall rather than sitting kitted up in a box. So um, that was one of the fun things that came out of Stitch Mania. Um, a couple other things too. Um, one was, and I think I alluded to this in one of my videos. You know, it's a it's a little bit freeing when you know that you only are going to stitch on something for two days. Because for me, what that did was things that normally are, you know, boring, that I'm really not interested in stitching, like borders, you know, or something repetitive, whatever. Um, it wasn't a big deal because I was like, Psh might as well stitch on the border because I'm only gonna stitch on this for two nights. And so it's not gonna be long enough to get bored with it. So that was one of the nice things um, is that it was a little bit freeing and it, um, and it gave me a little bit of, you know, permission to jump around if I wanted to, or, you know, stitch the boring parts or whatever. Um, the other thing that really came up for me, and I don't know that I talked about this in any of my vlogs, but the other thing that came up for me was that what I have found is, particularly when I pick up a piece that I'm just not feeling motivated to work on. Nine times out of 10, it's because there's something off with it that I'm unsure about or I'm not entirely sure what I don't like about it. I may not even be aware that it's something I don't like. But, um, you know, I was watching Emily's latest video and um, eclectic possessions and you know she talked about on one of her pieces <coughs> um, that she had had it sitting next to her for like two hours but she hadn't been motivated to work on it and she really felt that it was because she was a little um, disappointed with her thread colors and how they were coming out stitched and so one of the things I noticed is when I was working on that Blackbird Designs piece, I had switched up the colors because their colors had called for like a dark brown. I, mean, I don't even remember, but it was a dark brown and I was switching it to black because I was gonna stitch it on that gray fabric instead of white or cream or whatever the heck it called for. Um, beige, I think. 
So I switched up the colors and picked my own colors. And as I was stitching them, there was just something off about it. And I tried pulling other colors to look at them. I tried kind of pushing forward. And I realized I'm just not happy with this. And so 95% of the reason that I have as many whips as I have is because I ran into some sort of trouble. Either I've made some sort of horrendous mistake that I just can't face ripping out. <laughs> so it goes in the closet or, um, it's something like this Blackbird piece that I'm not happy with how the colors are showing up or something about the design or whatever. And so I put it in timeout. And then I never go back to it because now I know that the first thing I'm going to have to do when I pick it up is fix it. So rather than just completely set it aside and, you know, put it in timeout, I feel like one of the things that I want to do kind of post stitch mania is go back to that piece because I know right now that it's bothering me and it's because of the colors that I chose and it should be simple enough for me to, cause I mean that first motif that I stitched, you know, was this big. It should be simple enough for me to just pick new colors, rip it out, restitch it, and then get back on the right track. And then I know that the next time I pick it up, I've already settled that issue. Um, but I know then I'm not going to be happy with it the way that it is. So I'd rather just get it out, fix it, be done with it. And then I can set it aside if I want to or keep working on it. Um, so I ran into problems with that piece. Um, and so I did very little stitching on it. And it's the same reason that Emily had is that I knew that it, I was not happy with it. And rather than just like really kind of address the problem, I just sort of set it aside and was like, mm, I think I'll just play on the internet instead. Um, so I'm going to go back and revisit that piece and see what I can figure out because I'm not happy with the colors. Um, the other piece that I'm having a lot of problems with is Anniversaries of the Heart. So when I picked it up for Stitch Mania, it was really the first time that I've touched it since last year when I got so burnt out. Um, the good thing about picking it up again was that I got to look at the piece again and realize how much I really love it and how much I really want to keep working on it. Um, the other thing that I realized though, is that the block that I'm working on, there's a little bit of, there's a little bit of, um, emotional hurt that goes along with that block. So there's some of that. Um, but I think that the bigger issue with, with it is that I really am not happy with the colors. Um, the January block on anniversary, anniversaries of the heart is very pale, very light, and I love it because of that. Um, this block is also very light and very pale. 
and part of it I think is that I think that my dye lots of my threads are way lighter than they should be and I say should because you know when you look at the model photo which I know you know you have to take with a grain of salt but um I think that there's a few places on it that if I switched it out for a like one shade darker, I would be immensely more happy with it. Immensely happier, more happy with it. Um, so, I think that that I'm also going to go back and revisit that piece and take out some of the stitching that I've done and restitch it in a slightly darker color. Um, and I think you probably got some of that on one of my vlogs when I was talking about it and I had it outside and it did look better outside, but I'm not happy with it. So. I'm just going to rip out that really pale, pale, pale green. Um, and then there's a, an initial up on the right, the top right hand side that it is in a very pale blue. And I think I'm going to rip that out and do it in a slightly different shade. And I may actually be able to, uh, which I have done before, is with that, with the over dyed threads. I have, you know, done what quilters call fussy cutting, and I will use a length of thread that is darker or lighter based on what it is, where I'm wanting it to go. And so I may look at the skein of thread that I have and see if I can just choose a darker section of that same thread, or if I have to go to a completely different thread but I'm gonna try that and see um, but I am gonna go back and rip that out and I think I will be much happier with that block once I do that so that's my plan with the anniversaries of the heart um, and while I was kind of thinking you know and processing all of that through um, I thought about a couple other pieces that I have that when I think about them, and they're not even on my year of whips list because they're so far down at the bottom of the list of things I want to work on. And one of them has two problems with it. And if you had asked me, you know, six months ago why I wasn't working on that piece, I probably couldn't have told you. But learning some of the things that I learned through Stitch Mania, um, I think that I have pinpointed that the fabric that it's on is lamb's wool, which is a witch elk fabric which I now know that I hate. Um, and it is 40 count, but it is like cheesecloth. It is so, one, it is starched out the yin yang. That fabric could stand up on its own. And I hate working on fabric like that. So that's the first thing. But the second thing is you can see through it like, you know, I could drive with that over my face. It's that bad. Um, so I haven't done more than like, you know, this much on it. And part of it is the freaking fabric. Um, but I ordered what was called for. And now I know better. So um, the other piece that I don't like about it is that the... Um, it's a Scottish piece and so um, it has a big it's a reproduction sampler it has an alphabet at the top um, that's in two colors and it calls for a green and a gold 
and it's it's all DMC. Um, and so the green and the gold is what I started with because I, I like to start in the top left hand corner, um, which is fun when I watch Nicole um, from Nicole's Needlework start her pieces because she likes to start in the bottom right. And so if we're working on the same piece, eventually we kind of meet in the middle. But um, anyway, that's a an aside. Um, but I don't know what it, I don't know if it's that shade of DMC or if it is the combination of that DMC on the lamb's wool fabric or against the green. I don't know what it is, but it looks peach. So, you know, it's gold, but something happens with it when you stitch with it, with the green and on that lamb's wall that makes it look peach. And that's not gonna happen. I'm not gonna do a freaking huge sampler <coughs> with half of it in green and peach. So at some point, I'm gonna go back and revisit that piece. I'm gonna start over and I'm gonna choose different colors. And I'm gonna choose a better freaking fabric, that's for sure. Um, because I really, really, really want to stitch that piece because it's got such coolness down at the bottom. Um, but anyway, and you've never even seen it because I have never pulled it out. But anyway, um, but all of this processing that I did with Stitch Mania over the month of May made me realize that's why I hate that piece. So, thank you Stitch Mania. So, on to new things. So, at the end of Stitch Mania, you know, I had my last two days, I worked on Coffee Quaker, um, that was just kind of what I had slotted in at the end. Um, on June 1st, I picked up my, um, patriotic piece that I needed to get stitched for the Guild Exchange. So I stitched that, got that done. I think it took me about four nights of stitching. Got that done and um, got the finishing done. We had the exchange last night. Um, I will insert a photo of what my piece looked like uh, finished right here. And then the piece that I got in the exchange um, was stitched by a very sweet friend of mine. I was so excited to get this. And so this is, I believe, a, she said it was a you and I and friends piece. And I just love it. And she put this cute little pin in here so that I can use it for a pin cushion, should I want. It is filled with crushed walnut shells. It's this beautiful fabric on the back. And I just love it. It is such a cute, cute, cute piece. And she also made this awesome tassel that I could use for a scissor fob or, you know, whatever. I love it. It's so pretty. So pretty. So thank you, Lori. I'm so glad I got this. So, um, and I realized I didn't take a picture of it last night, so I need to take a picture and post it on Instagram. Um, I have been uh, working on my Coffee Quaker since I finished the exchange piece. And so here's where I'm at on Coffee Quaker. <coughs> And my, um, my little needle minder used to have two little hangy down things, but one of them met with disaster. So now I only have one hangy down thing. The beads came off. So anyway, um, 
first I drink the coffee, then I, and this has been fun for folks on Instagram to fill in the blank. Um, so I had stitched this little flower and this motif um, the last couple of days of May, and I've been working on this one. And I'm doing this in, it looks black, but it is actually a very, very dark brown. It is espresso bean. Um, but I love that dark contrast down there. Um, and then I kind of started on the little bowl of fruit that goes right here. So um, this is the bottom corner. So once I get these two motifs done, I will be done over here and I can start working my way over and up. So still enjoying this, still love how it looks very happy with it even if it does look like i've wadded it up in the bottom of my bag love it love it um and so a couple other things um i mentioned the uh salem stitch along starting on june 10th so i'm going to be stitching salem remembered by the primitive needle and i have my um fab mystery fabric that who knows what this was for but now it's for Salem Remembered um and it's just a beautiful beautiful piece it's got a little bit of a greenish tint to it which is why I keep thinking it's meadow rue but I don't think it's meadow rue I think meadow rue is a little pinker than this so I don't know what the heck it is I'm 99.9% 9 sure it's lakeside, but I don't know what it was for. And so I picked my, I've been working on um, my colors, pulling threads. So it basically calls for three colors. So it calls for um, kind of a, a, you know, a burnt umber color that all of the names are in and the border is in. And then up here in these corners, uh, it's got a green, which is the Tuscan olive in the background, and then it's got an orangey, red orangey color <coughs> for the stars. So, um, what I have picked for my, um, I picked this fern frond, um, which is a bell swa for the green. I think that'll be really pretty. And then um, for the stars, I picked two Glorianas. Um, so they're both kind of orangey, pumpkin-y fall. Um, this is antique gold dark. And then this one has a little more variation in it. It goes way lighter. Um, this is Gloriana. autumn gold and I think actually one or both of these were gifted to me by Lori who um, I got the ornament from so I thought that would be fun to use one of these in this piece um, since she gifted those to me so but they're both really beautiful fall colors um, and so then I had to figure out my words and the border. And so I pulled this, which is a Belsoi chestnut, which is kind of a medium brownish color. And then I also pulled, this is another Belsoi, this is moss. And it's a little hard to tell in the bag, but it goes from like kind of a black to sort of a mossy green. Um, I'm leaning towards using this rather than the brown. I just think that might be pretty. And then um, I mentioned uh, doing Susanna Martin's name in a different color because she is who I am descended from. And so I picked this um, Belsoi Red Fox, and it is kind of a rusty blood red, which I thought would be appropriate. 
So that's what I think I'm gonna do. But, um, oh, and then I just pulled, this is a random dinky dye. Um, it's kind of a charcoal -y black. Um, in case I didn't like the moss or the chestnut, but I think I'm gonna go with the moss. Um, so I pulled all of these and then I will just sort of play when I get them on here. Um, but I think they'll be pretty. So I'm very much looking forward to that. Um, I have had a lot of questions um, from people on Instagram or messaging me um, about you know where they can learn more about uh, the stitch along. So um, if you let me know your name, I can tag you on Facebook, on the Facebook post. It's in Stitch Mania. There's not a separate group for it. Um, we're starting on June 10th. Um, and the, um, you, can, you, you can stitch any Salem related chart that you want to. Um, you know, whatever floats your boat. And uh, the hashtags that we're using, you can use on Facebook or Instagram. Um, <clears throat> we're using uh, Salem Not Forgotten and Salem 325, uh, since it's the 325th anniversary. So, um, and since we're talking about primitive needle, I wanted to share um, that a very, very sweet person, um, Robin, who is also known as uh, My Life's a Stitch on Instagram, um, messaged me and offered up her, um, uh, to pass along her chart for a primitive needle, follow me. So she sent this on to me, um, which I very much appreciated because it is one that I did not have. Um, so I'm super excited about that. And then she also sent along um, this beautiful chenille trim. Um, one is in black and one is in uh, maybe that says antique red. I think that's what that says. Um, so both of these are just gorgeous. And so I'm so excited to get to use those. So thank you so much, Robin. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you for thinking of me. And I'm so excited to have this chart. So yay. I can't wait to stitch it. So um, this week I am actually on vacation from work. And um, so I am trying to get some things done around the house. Eric and I have been doing lots of um, little projects around the house, um, putting up new curtains, and I had to hem some curtains and, you know, all that sort of thing. Um, he is um, <clears throat> building me um, some shelves to display some of my smalls on, which I'm super excited about. And one of the other things that I am working on is trying to do some finishing on some pieces that I've had laying around forever. So um, I did manage to finish one. Um, so this is a little piece that was um, <clears throat> a kit that was given to uh, folks that went to the Stitch Away retreat, which was hosted by um, the Stitch Niche, my local needle workshop. This was from 2013, um, and it's a little orts jar, and um, it, you know, it's just one of these little Tupperware containers, perfect for traveling, um, but I stitched the little top part forever ago, and so it just needed to be finished, some cording done, and I just made cording out of the leftover thread so that it matched just twisted it all up together. I think it turned out really nice and glued that sucker on. So I got this done. I've got a couple more pieces. Obviously I finished my <coughs> glory 
um, piece for the patriotic exchange. So I have a couple other pieces um, that I'm working on getting finished. I had to go to Joanne's and get some interfacing. Um, that's what's been the holdup. So, and as you can tell, my allergies have been really bad. So, stuff floating around in the air. Um, like crazy. So, anyway, um, I think that's it for me. But I wanted to do a quick, you know, I can't be brief, wrap-up video. Um, and just tell you kind of my thoughts about Stitch Mania. Um, I am thinking that I may try to do more um, vlogs um, rather than a sit down, look at the camera kind of video because it seems, it, it's a lot harder for me to get a big chunk of time to be able to do that. So I may do kind of a mix of both depending on how things go, but I'd rather be able to get a video out um, and get it uploaded and have it be, you know, little snippets rather than, um, you know, wait a month to try to get a big chunk of time. So anyway, that's my plan. Hopefully that works for you guys. And um, please uh, go, you know, visit me on my blog, cozyegg.cozyeggdesigns.com. Um, feel free to, you know, reach out to me on Instagram at cozyegg. And um, <clears throat> I think that's it. So, um, oh, and Miss Emily did tag me for the uh, You're Awesome tag, which I am deeply grateful for. Um, and I have had that rolling around in my head as well. So um, I'm gonna do a separate video on that because I want to I want to give it you know a proper a proper um, discussion I'll put it that way so um, I'm going to hold that and um, hold it in reserve for right now but I will be back um, to talk more about that so anyway Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Thanks for subscribing and leaving me comments and all that good stuff. I really appreciate it. And I will see you guys soon. Bye.